today I'd like to talk to you about grassroots green architecture. I think many of you have already heard terms such as sustainability, embodied energy, um, uh, high carbon footprint, etc., etc. Very important terms, yes. But what it also does is sometimes it distances the layman from what is actually important, uh, from, from understanding that actually sustainability is a very simple concept. So I like to use this opportunity um, to explain how simple it can be and how, as Mason Zinc, we uh, understand the subject and try to respond to it. Yeah. So let's take it down back to the basics. Any project is shaped by three basic factors. One is the person, the people, and the product. So the person being the primary stakeholder or the client, the people being the community, because any place where there's a building, there are people around it, and uh, one influences the other, uh, both ways. And uh, looking at the product, the product is obviously the output, and um, you know what our efforts finally um, uh, get delivered to, uh, something tangible. Now, what better way to explain this concept through personal experience so I'd like to just take you through um, one of the projects that's very close to our hearts. This is uh, Ramaram. It means beautiful woods. It is actually a farmhouse that's situated uh, in Tamil Nadu near a reserve forest called Manchi. Now, coming back to the person, uh, the person who dreamt about this, uh, this is our client, Mr. Thomas, uh, and his family. So uh, he had a dream of uh, living in an organic farm. He used to be an IT professional. He quit the IT sector and decided to go into organic farming. And he came to us saying that he wanted a home that reflected his ideologies. And hence, an organic farm house for an organic farm was conceived. Now, in this case, it was a rural setting. And uh, we wanted to see how the community could possibly benefit from the structure that was coming up. So that led to us looking at if we could use the local labor itself, train them in natural building, and see if you know, we could help in the local e economy this way. So we, uh, we identified um, people with uh, good skills. For instance, if I speak about Saravanan, who was a mason, he was already a mason, which meant that he had the skill of building, just that he was building in a conventional way using, you know, cement, steel, a lot of cement and steel and concrete. So we kind of nudged all these people in, in the direction that we wanted, saying, how about you think of building natural, with natural materials? Um, and obviously, they're not going to get, you know, the concept of sustainability and everything. It was just telling them, how about we build with simpler materials, healthier materials, etc. And that's how this journey started. Now, coming to the product, so this is where all architects are trained. We are trained for five years, and then we go into specialization, et cetera, is basically the product, right, to deliver a product that's effic effective and efficient. So for us, it meant that the product, from its conception um, to, through its uh, construction process and even in its operational process, is sustainable. So during its conception, looking at the layout, figuring out uh, how it can be best, uh, you know, respond to the climate, um, figuring out also through the construction process, looking at, okay, what are the materials now that we can use? Uh, it's not just enough that, you know, it's climate responsive and the rooms are placed the right way. What are the materials that we can build with um, so that it, it, it maintains that low energy that we're aiming for? So then, as I said earlier, this was a farmhouse. So this was sitting on a 25-acre farm, which meant that there's already a lot of land there, which meant that there's soil there. And it was kind of a no-brainer for us for using that soil to make the walls. Um, so there was stone available, so our walls were mainly made out of stone and out of mud walls. Now, looking at the operational process, many people forget that architecture doesn't stop once a building is built. It continues in the operation as well. 
we are very much responsible for the amount of energy that a building uses to become comfortable or livable. Hence, looking at the operational process as well and seeing how, during this process, how can we bring down um, the energy expenses of this building. So we looked at rainwater harvesting, we looked at solar for uh, electricity, we also looked at biogas for cooking. Now, this is the interesting part where I said, let's break it down to the basics. But when you, you know, sensibly respond to all these three factors, that is the, the person, the people, and the product, you automatically respond to sustainability at its core. Now, when one talks about environment-friendly architecture, we tend to get stuck in only the environment aspect of it. But the truth is that sustainability has a lot of other aspects. It has socio-cultural aspects. You need to respect and respond to the culture of that community. It needs to be contextual. There are socio-economic aspects. The budget is something that you need to think of, etc. And finally, what you end up with when you respect these principles is something that blends in and does not stand out, something that encourages community interaction. This was in a rural setting, so we had a lot of verandas. Uh, usually in villages in India, there is the concept of community. People come together, discuss, and deliberate. And we wanted to welcome this and not change their way of living just because we are building something new in that area. Climate responsive design. It is set in Tamil Nadu. Summers can be very hot. So having verandas, looking at courtyards to ensure ventilation and natural light throughout. Um, honesty in material, simple materials. Um, you know, stone is shown as stone. Mud will be shown as mud. And if ever there's any concrete beams or anything tying the building together, it is shown as concrete. We believe in honesty in, of material. Sim simplicity at its core. So as I said, this site was also used as a platform for learning. So there are imperf imperfections in the building, but we find beauty in these imperfections. Now, this was one of the very first projects that we took on, and we realized very soon that this can't be uh, just uh, kept for a, this principle or this approach cannot be uh, just for our projects, but also should be the way our mission is in architecture, what we want to do. So we looked really into creating awareness, outreach, capacity building, also because sustainability cannot be a choice anymore. It has to become the norm. The construction industry, unfortunately, is the most polluting industry uh, in the world. So we wanted to make it accessible and available, the concept and principles of sustainability and natural building. And this led us to conducting a lot of outreach programs, programs for school children, for colleges, for professionals, for the public, for also skilling people, uh, the masons, etc. It is also used, our sites are also used as a platform for learning, where the client, the mason, students uh, all come together and learn and interact with each other, which creates a way for dialogue and interaction. Now, coming to the last part, uh, the product. Now, we believe that innovation is something that needs to go beyond, but implement implementation needs to come from within. And we also believe that um, development cannot be restricted to newer materials, and we cannot forget the traditional materials or our traditional know-how. So we look into how can we innovate these materials to respond to the problems of the future and the present. So like I said, we, we build a lot with natural material, looking into mud. This is another study that we conducted on traditional know-how. So if you look at all our ancestral buildings, there's a lot of traditional know-how present in them, slowly disappearing because these houses are being demolished and something new is coming, something alien to what existed there. So we are looking at, right now, looking at studying these traditional um, additives that were added in mud to extend its uh, life and also make it more resistant to water, etc. Now, uh, I would like to end with this message, just saying that for us, 
Architecture means being more hands-on, something with a lot of heart, and something that's at the core of it just very human. Thank you.